Welcome to episode 26 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today, I am talking about Live Portrait, a tool that lets you bring your portrait images to life and create facial expressions. You can take a still photo and add animation to it based on a video or by simply changing settings. Open Comfy UI, go to the manager, then under custom nodes, search for Advanced Live Portrait and install this node. Wait for the installation to finish, then search for Video Helper. If you followed episode 25, you should already have it. If not, install it. Then click on Restart and press the OK button. Wait for it to install, and Comfy UI will open in a new tab. Now let's build the workflow. Double click on the canvas and search for Load Image. This node allows you to upload an image that you want to use in the workflow. For today's episode, the node only works with portraits of people. You need a still portrait. Pick a sharp, well-lit photo of a face looking straight at the camera. A neutral expression works best for smoother animations. Next, double-click again on the canvas and search for Expression Editor. Click on it to add it to the canvas. Now, connect the loaded image to the Source Image input. After that, we need to save the image, so add either a Save or Preview node. I suggest adding a Preview node since it's generating many images. You can then right-click on the image and save it when you find the right one. As you can see, it's a simple workflow. When you run it for the first time, it will download the necessary models to run. However, once the download is complete, the next time you run it, it will generate much faster. If it doesn't download, make sure you have activated the long path setting in Windows. When I run it, I get the same image because we haven't made any changes to the settings. To easily change any setting, click and drag left or right or up and down to adjust the values. Alternatively, you can use the arrows or type the value you want. For example, if I run the workflow with blink minus 20, I make the portrait blink. Since it's quick to adjust settings to find the best values, I suggest going to the Q button. From the small arrow, you can see more options, so select Q on change. Now, any changes we make to the settings will automatically Q, which is cool because you can see the changes live. You can also open the mouth to make the portrait say A or move it to the negative value to close it. From the blink setting, you can close the eyes, move the eyebrows, or make them wing. I really like that one. You can also rotate pitch, yaw, and roll. Lots of cool options. Additionally, you can change the pupil direction so the portrait looks where you want in the direction you choose. Play around with different settings until you like what you see. Sometimes you may want to reset all settings and start over. To do that, right-click on the node and select Fix Node. This will recreate the node with the default settings. We also have the Crop Factor option, which is helpful. Let me open a different portrait, like this cartoon character. If you start rotating the pitch, you may notice that on top of the head, the hair gets cut off. Some parts of it seem to remain in the air and don't move. This happens because the crop factor isn't large enough to capture the entire hair during the generation. A value of 1.8 still cuts the hair, but a value of 1.9 seems to be just right. This model is trained on 512 pixel images, so it generates the face and expression at that size. Therefore, you want the crop to be big enough to capture what you need, but not so large that it includes unnecessary space. If you have a large image, and the face is 512 pixels, you'll get the big image, but the face will appear blurry because the image is stretched to fit the original size. Let's delete the current node, then double click on the canvas and search for Advanced Live Portrait. This one looks a little different. Connect the same image to the source image node input and then connect the output. This node requires an input for driving images. So we can actually add a video by using the Load Video node and connecting it to the Drive Images node input. Since we're working with a video here, I'll turn off Q on Change. Choose a video that shows the expressions and movements you want to transfer to the portrait. For the best results, make sure the face in the video is clearly visible and well lit. What we have now is 178 frames in the preview. If you want to save all those frames as images, you can use a Save node instead of a Preview node. However, I actually want to get a video output, not images, so I'm deleting the node and searching for a new one called Video Combine from the Video Helper nodes. I'll change the prefix so that my videos are named Portrait, then for the format, I'll choose Video. 
specifically the H264 MP4 format. For the frame rate, choose the frame rate you prefer. More frames will mean more time, so I'll go with 24 frames per second, but you can go higher or lower depending on what you want to create. Oh, and I forgot to mention we need a driving video. You can either record yourself or use a video that the node creator provided for demo purposes. If you go to their GitHub page, you can find more information about the node. I'll add the link in the description. They have a folder called Sample. If you click on it, you'll find a file named Driving Video MP4. Click on it and you can download it by using the Download Raw File button. Save it to your hard drive. Once it's saved, click on the button to load that video. You'll see a woman doing facial expressions and the workflow picks up all those movements and adapts them to our portrait photo. It works best for real people, but sometimes it can work for cartoon-like characters, though not as well as with real faces. You can adjust the frames per second to match the original video frames. Now, let me upload a photo that works better, like this portrait of a Viking. You can see much better how the facial expressions are copied to the Viking's face. It's pretty cool. So, record your own facial expressions and have fun animating your still photos. Let's take it a step further. I'll open another workflow. By the way, all the workflows I use are available for free on my Discord server for you to download. This workflow, which I've already shown to you, takes an image and allows you to edit the facial expressions. This workflow converts a static image into a video by using another video as input to copy the motion of the facial expressions. In this workflow, we have the expression editor added as an extra. First, we made the girl smile and it's using the motion from the video to animate her. I'm using the same sample video to show you the example. For instance, if I reset the smile and make the girl blink, or in this case, close her eyes, since I don't have a frame to open them, You'll notice that the entire video shows the eyes closed, as it cannot open them. So, it uses the video for motion, but instead of taking the expression from our image, it takes the edited expression instead. This workflow has multiple expression editors. Here's how it works. I upload the video from which I want to take the facial expressions, then I upload a portrait photo. This original image is at motion zero. Next, we have the first motion editor, which is linked to the second motion editor using the motion link. The second editor is then connected to the advanced live portrait. And finally, everything is combined into the final video. What we can do here is to specify which motion we want on each line. The first number represents the motion number. Zero is the original, one is the first editor, two is the second editor, and so on. After that, we have the equal sign followed by the changing frame length, which is separated by a colon. Then we define the length of frames waiting for the next motion. In motion zero, we have a neutral face. In motion one, the first editor has the lips positioned as if saying woo. And in motion two, the face is smiling. In the advanced node, we specify using those commands, which expression to play, and for how many frames, as well as how much to wait between frames, all of this is then combined with the motion from the video. So there's a lot of motion happening here with various facial expressions being blended together based on the video input. But the next workflow will make it easier to see. This one doesn't require video input. We can animate the image by simply changing settings. First, we load our portrait. Then motion one is linked to motion two, then to motion three, and finally to motion four. I've added a note here and you can also add extra information for each motion, like motion one, smiling, or something similar to make it easier to track. This way, we can decide in which order to play the expressions and how long each one should last. For each motion, I've included the corresponding command, and I've set each motion to last between five to 10 frames. I mix the frames, and for the length of frames waiting for the next motion, I left it at zero for now. This allows for a smooth transition between expressions. Right now you can see that she's moving her head from left to right. This movement is happening because I rotated the head using the settings. So I can remove the rotate yaw, which is set to nine and minus nine. And instead I'll add rotate pitch with values of three and minus three. So the head moves in both directions. When I test it, watch the head movement. It now goes up and down instead of left to right. 
This shows that you have a lot of control over how you can move things. You just need to experiment and you can create all kinds of animations. Of course, the most natural results will come when you use a real video to drive those motions, but for stickers or simple animations, you can build a workflow once and reuse it for other images. For example, I can add this character and it can still be affected by the animation, even though it's not a perfect real human face. When I run it, I get this result, but the problem is with the hair because it isn't included in the crop. So I can adjust the crop size for all the editors. Now, when I test it, the hair is included in the animation. So it's not stretched, as you can see here. If you don't want to manually adjust the crop settings each time, you can right click and choose Convert Crop to Input. I'll do this for just these two editors so you can get an idea, but you can apply the same method to all the editors. This way, you can add a primitive node that can adapt to whatever we connect. Now, I can connect it to both crop inputs, and when I change the value, it will automatically adjust for all the editors connected to it. While this setup can produce great animations, it does have some limitations, especially due to the 512 pixel size used for the face. Additionally, there are some potential issues. For example, if I load this elf, when I run the workflow, it does an automatic crop around the face, like around the neck area in this case. The problem is that sometimes the line where the crop is connected is visible, like in this example. You can see the lines between the old image and the modified generation pasted on top. However, this isn't visible in all images. The way I've found to make it less noticeable is to use a darker image or a darker background. For example, with this elf, the crop still cuts around the neck area, but when I zoom in, I can't see any visible cut or line. So try different images and backgrounds to see what works best for your workflow. Let me switch to the other workflow as I forgot to show you something important. The first number after the equal sign, which represents the changing frame length, cannot have a value of zero. If I run it with a value of zero, I get an error due to division by zero. Also, you cannot have only one frame without specifying how long it takes to get to the next frame, which will trigger another error. So the first length needs to be greater than one, and the second one needs to be there even if it's zero. If I remove all the commands and leave only motion zero and motion one, it will run just those two motions, as you can see in the results. So it's best to start simple and make it more complex with each additional motion. You can also repeat motions with different lengths. For example, if I want to add the settings for motion three, I can type three equal sign. I can type three, then add an equal sign, then space then 15 for the length of that motion, followed by a colon and zero for no wait time before moving to the next motion. This is the result, which combines all three motions. By the way, what made it possible to run without a driving video is the setting that says animate without video. It needs to be set to true. So the workflow only takes into account the motions I've set up without needing a video input. One last test, and I'll finish this tutorial with this gnome-like portrait. This is how it looks. If you'd like to help this channel grow so I can create more tutorials, don't forget to leave a like and a comment. It really helps boost the channel. And for those who are able, consider leaving a super thanks or subscribing to the membership to support even further. And what do we have here? Our legends and VIP members. Thank you all for your support. I wish you an amazing day and I'll see you on Discord. Bye bye.